Hi everybody. Last lecture we learned how to find the Fourier transform of a discrete time signal. And in this lecture we're going to uh, uh, learn how to find the inverse of discrete time Fourier transform. Here you see that the formula for Fourier transform for a discrete time signal. Now it's required to find that one if this one is given. Well, there are two methods to do that. Uh, the first method is like by comparing the terms. So let's first expand this uh, sum. So you can write now x of omega is equal to, uh, you start from n equal to minus infinity. Well, let's reach n equal negative 2, substitute by n equal negative 2. So you have x negative 2. E, and then when you, when you put in this n negative 2, negative 2, and multiply by the negative here, will be positive, positive j to omega, continue, and then x, uh, I mean n from minus 2 to minus 1, so you have x minus 1, e, j omega, then you go to n equal 0, so x equal 0, and then when you put n equal 0 here, that will be e bar 0 equal 1, so there's nothing there. Then you start to increase n to n1. When you substitute n equal to 1, you have negative j omega, negative j omega, increase to 2, will be e minus j 2 omega, and then you can continue like that. Well, now let's just observe it. From this equation, or this expansion, you will see that when you have negative 2 here, you have the power of the E is positive. So let's just have a general formula. We'll say let, let uh, M be a positive integer. Like say, uh, M could be only equal to 0, 1, 2, infinity. All right. If we choose m as a positive integer, we can find out that if you want to find x minus m, that will be the coefficient of e to the power of uh, j m omega, like like this term. But m equal uh, m equal to so you have my mi minus m and you have here positive, right? If you want to find the positive um, for positive uh, m, that will be the coefficient of e to the power minus j m. Okay. All right. So I mean that's really simple and easy. Let's take an example. See how can we find that? Example one. Uh, let's say that you have a sequence e to the power j to omega plus 3e j omega plus 5 plus 2 e minus j omega minus 1 e uh, minus j to omega and let's stop and the question is find the sequence xn all right, so when you go for the first term, this term, you'll find that's 2 omega, and you'll find it's positive, so that the coefficient here in front of it, which is 1, that would be the that would be x minus 2. You take this number, and then just flip the sign. So we'll say x minus 2 is, <coughs> is equal to 1. Excuse me. Let's go for this one. Uh, here you have 1, positive 1, so you have x minus 1. And the coefficient is equal to 3. That's equal to 3. Let's go for this one. There is nothing there. There is no exponential. It means x is 0. So x, when n equals 0, is equal to 5. You go for this one. You have minus 1. So you will have x1 equal to 2. The last one, that's minus 2, will be x2. And the coefficient minus 1. So that's, I mean, the, the sequence. And you might sketch it if you like. That will be n. 
and you have from minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 at uh, x equals 0 it's equal 5 so you can have you say this is 5 at 1 is equal to let's just assume this is 2 at 2 is equal minus 1 2 minus 1 and you have at x equal minus 2 that's equal to 1 let's say this is 1 and minus 1 that's equal to 3 let's just say here 3 and that's it all right let's take another example how can you adapt to this expansion uh, this problem is another easy one let's say that um, x of omega is equal to 0.5 1 plus 4 cosine omega the question is find the sequence xn all right i will i will try to find the sum but it's Maybe you look at it, you see it's okay, it's different. No, just look at the cosine term and try to find the equivalent of cosine. You know that the cosine omega is equal to e to the j, the angle, plus e to the minus j, and we divide it by 2. So, okay, that's it. So I had the expansion. So I can rewrite x of omega equal to 2.5 times 1 plus 4 and cosine I have the expression here that will be e g omega minus e I'm sorry plus e minus g omega divided by 2 so 2 cancel was 4 we have 2 so you have 0.5 1 plus 2 e j omega plus 2 e minus g omega multiply 0 0.5 so we have 0 0.5 times 1 is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 times 2 is equal 1 e g omega plus e minus g omega okay so that's x of omega when you compare the constant term that's x to the power of zero all right a g omega that's positive one so it will be x negative one and the coefficient is equal one so that's one and the same thing, that's, I mean, minus 1 will be x1. And the magnitude is equal 1. That's equal 1. You can sketch this function. Very simple. You got like 0, minus 1, 1. At 0 is equal to 0 0.5. That's 0 0.5. At minus 1 is equal 1. So I'll make it a double. And at 1 is equal 1. That's it. So that's x of n. All right. We have another example how to do the use the integration. All right. Let's just take the second method. The second method will be using the formula. That's example three. All right. Um, here is the example. Find um, x of n f x of omega given as e to the power minus g omega over 2 that's when omega greater than or equal minus 1 and less than 1 and 0 otherwise all right in this case we are going to use the formula let's see how we use the formula x oh you should write x here small x of n is equal to 1 over 2 pi the integration minus infinity to infinity e to the uh, i mean i'm sorry that's the function given which will be x of omega multiplied by e j omega n the integration with respect to d omega all right now uh, it's defined from minus 1 to 1 
and the rest will be zero so I can change the limit of integration from minus 1 to 1 x omega is defined by e minus j half so I will just replace x omega the Fourier transform of the signal e minus j you can write it like that 0.5 omega okay then you go for the second step you have two function multiplied and you have, you have common omega here everywhere and j so you can say it's equal to 1 over 2 pi from minus 1 to 1 e take j as a common factor and also omega as a common factor so what's left it's left from here 0 0.5 I'm sorry minus 0 0.5 so minus 0 0.5 and here you got n plus n okay so you have minus 0 0.5 plus n you can call it anything like call it a for example I mean just to make uh, make it simple a is equal n minus 0 0.5 so now you what want you to do 1 over 2 pi the integration from minus 1 to 1 e j a omega d omega just to make it to make it look easy it's equal to 1 over 2 pi the integration of this one e j n omega the same thing divided by uh, j n oh we forgot a oops forgot a that's important here so j a right because we are integrating with omega and uh, will be the same and the differentiation of this one will be j a and the limit will be from negative 1 to 1 so you can write 1 over 2 by j a and you substitute one time by omega by 1 so it'll be e to the power j a minus e to the power of minus j a all right so you know that it's close to sine all right because we know sine a is equal to e to the j a minus e to the minus j a divided by 2 j so if you multiply 2 j by both sides so 2 j times sine a equal this so this one is equal to j sine a let's substitute so that's our xn by the way is equal 1 over 2 pi j a and this guy is equal to j sine a well 2 cancel with 2 j with j so what's left is equal 1 over pi a sine a you can simplify it more you can say sine a divided by a and you have 1 over pi here this one is known as sin function as we explained before so your answer will be xn is equal to 1 over pi sine a i mean sin a all right now we can put uh, a the value that we did before that's equal n minus 0.5 and then you can sketch this using matlab it's just i mean three lines uh, code in the matlab you'll see it in down out and I hope that you got now the idea how to find the inverse of discrete time Fourier transform. Thank you for paying attention.